Collective Obligation is the new exotic pulse rifle from the Vow of the Disciple raid that launched with the Witch Queen expansion. Now, this pulse rifle may not instantly seem as overpowered as Vex Mythoclast, but I think people are going to learn to love this exotic weapon with a little time with it. This weapon works so well with Void 3.0, and today I'm going to have a look at the stats, the perks, how to get the weapon, plus how to make it effective with Void 3.0 builds. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And roughly 98% of viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed. So subscribe today and never miss an update. Well, one of the best parts of the Witch Queen expansion has been the Void 3.0 update and the collective obligation works hand in hand with Void 3.0. Well, given we've got all the aspects and the fragments that go with Void, plus you can get access to all of those tools when you start the Witch Queen campaign, and that already makes it better than the process we had to go through with Stasis. Well, first up today, let's have a look at the Collective Obligation. So Collective Obligation is a new exotic energy pulse rifle, and looking at the stats, we've got 29 for impact, 54 for range, 60 for stability, 47 for handling, 47 for reload speed. It's a 390 rounds per minute pulse rifle, with 36 in the magazine. So looking at the perks, we've got Void Leech. So this weapon leeches Void debuffs when damaging targets that are suppressed, weakened, or volatile. And once charged, you can swap firing modes, and in this mode, damage from the weapon applies the same Void debuffs that were leeched. We've also got Umbral Sustenance, so the weapon's magazine is automatically reloaded when you gain Devour, avoid Overshield, or become invisible. Well, Collective Obligation managed to create really unique playstyles that allow you to build around the Void buffs and the debuffs. So with Collective Obligation, you can essentially have many of the debuffs active at the same time, as long as you keep an eye on the timers and use Collective Obligation effectively. So Void Leech is the key perk here. This one makes it one of the most unique and also one of the most effective exotic weapons out there. And here is a quick reminder of some of the Void 3.0 keywords to take note of when using Collective Obligation. Well, first of all, we've got Suppress, so the target is taken out of any active ability when suppressed. And while suppressed, the target cannot activate any abilities or movement modes, and combatants are also disoriented. Then we've got Weakened, so the target takes increased damage, has slowed movement, and is disoriented. Then we've got Volatile, so the target will explode in a void detonation upon taking additional damage. And if the target dies before Volatile has taken enough damage to detonate, the detonation happens anyway. So take Suppression as an example. So in Void 3.0 you've got Suppression Grenades, and you can throw them to suppress your target, which means they are disoriented. So once you've hit an enemy with the Suppression Grenade, you can then leech this effect, or essentially transfer this effect from the battlefield into your weapon, and then spray this effect with the Collective Obligation, further using the suppression to your advantage. Well, this gets even better when you combine mods with the exotic weapon. For example, Suppressive Darkness. This is an artifact mod in Season of the Risen, and the description reads, so whenever you suppress a combatant, you also weaken them, causing them to take additional damage for a short time. So we're applying two Void 3.0 effects, or keywords here, and when you use the Collective Obligation with the mod and Suppression Grenades, then you're weakening enemies too, Plus, you're spreading this effect with the weapon by leeching the effect and using the alternate firing mode. And it is going to take a little bit of practice, but once you get your head around how this weapon works, then it's very, very potent. And I think over time, it's going to be a very sought-after weapon. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to get Collective Obligation in Destiny 2. Well, to get this exotic pulse rifle, you have to run through the Vow of the Disciple raid. And it's a random drop from the final boss. So this is the only place that you can get it, and if it's like other raids, then you've got approximately a 5% chance at getting it. Well, to maximise your chances, you can run three characters per week. That way you've got multiple chances to get it to drop for you. And to run the raid, you will need access to the Witch Queen expansion, and you'll have to find five other guardians, so you can either get some friends together, run with some clan mates, or you can find other guardians via LFG apps or forums, and I would recommend using the Bungie app that is available for iOS, Android, or via Bungie.net. Well, next up, let's have a look at a Collective Obligation and Void Warlock build. So first of all, looking at the armor, I'm using Nezrak Sin. This is one of the best Warlock exotic armor pieces around. You know, Nezrak Sin is an exotic Warlock helmet, 
and it comes with the perk Abyssal Extractors, so void damage kills increase the ability energy recharge rate. You can get this as a random exotic drop, or from Zur when he's selling it. Next up, let's have a look at the subclass. The only subclass to use really with this weapon is Void, and it's Void 3.0. So first of all, with the grenades, I'm using Suppression Grenades, and then looking at the aspects, I'm using Child of the Old Gods, so Rifts create Void Souls that weaken enemies that they latch on, and also Feed the Void, so Void Ability Kills activate Devour, and that heals the player with each kill. So Feed the Void is going to be really good here, as that's going to activate our perk Umbral Sustenance, that means the magazine's automatically reloaded, when you gain Devour. Well next up, looking at the Fragments, so you can pretty much use any combination of Fragments, but the one that you definitely want to be using is called Echo of Undermining, and that is where Grenades weaken enemies. Using this in combination with Suppression Grenades means you're going to be able to leech Suppression and Weaken at the same time with the weapon, and then use the Collective Obligation to Suppress and Weaken multiple enemies while shooting with that gun. Well next up, let's have a look at the mods to use, so first of all I'm using Font of Might, so picking up an elemental well that matches a subclass element grants a temporary bonus boost to weapon damage. I'm also using Elemental Ordnance, so defeating a combatant with a grenade spawns an elemental well that matches your subclass energy. I'm also using Volatile Flow, so picking up an elemental well that grants your void weapons volatile rounds. Then I'm using Energy Vampirism, so gain energy for your least charged ability when you suppress a target. That's going to work really, really well with the Suppression Grenades. And finally, I'm using Bountiful Wells. So Elemental Well mods that cause you to spawn Elemental Wells can now stack, spawning additional wells for each additional copy of the mod that you have equipped. So one of the key ones here is Volatile Flow. So picking up an Elemental Well that grants your Void Weapons Volatile Rounds. And given that the Collective Obligation is a Void Weapon, well that is now going to automatically fire Volatile Rounds, making this weapon even better. So there is an optional point here, I'm using a combination of grenades and fragments to suppress and weaken targets at the same time. However, there is another way to do this, through a seasonal mod called Suppressive Darkness. So the description on Suppressive Darkness is, whenever you suppress a combatant you also weaken them, causing them to take additional damage for a short time. Therefore, if you want to use another fragment that isn't the Echo of Undermining, and that is where grenades weaken enemies, then you could use Suppressive Darkness instead, the only thing here is that there's no guarantee that this mod is going to be around next season. So that's why I'm using a combination of grenades and also the fragments too. So I have heard a bunch of people say they are underwhelmed by Collective Obligation, but I do think it's really, really good. And it's a great showcase for the new Void 3.0 subclass and also how a weapon can work with the new subclass types. I don't think we saw anything like this with Stasis, so this is quite new and pushing the boundaries of what exotic weapons can do, and it is always interesting to see Bungie pushing those boundaries. So it may not be immediately as OP as Vex Mythoclast was, but I reckon this weapon is really, really good. And if you like doing void builds, well this weapon is absolutely a great addition. Well let me know in the comments what you think of the collective obligation and let me know your top builds with it. Well that is it for this guide for how to get the collective obligation in Destiny 2, and as always, thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.